All right, Shalom. I want to start out by giving all praises on our glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Harba Kakadash. The bond of the apostles and elders is a great millstone. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Coming at you with another quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, this lesson may be edifying. And as you see on the screen, I have an image of a golden cup, right? Now, America, Babylon, a great, as it's stated in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 7. Let's pull it up real fast. It says, Babylon, uh, Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that had made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. All right. So America represents this golden cup. All right, and the nations have drunken from this golden cup. Okay, now we know this golden cup is full of what? Abominations, right? As it's stated here, <clears> Hold <throat> on, Salakia. As it's stated here, it has made what? The whole earth drunk. And when you look, think about these nations, these other nations, they are drunk off the wine and fornication of Babylon. All right. They are drunk off the traditions. They are drunk off the philosophies. They are drunk, drunk off the way of life. OK, that um, that Babylon and Great has pushed all across the earth. Now, why am I stating this? OK, so, you know, I had this uh, older gentleman come up to me and uh. He starts speaking to me out of nowhere. He's from Pakistan, right? And he just, you know, just having a, just a brief conversation. And, uh, you know, he asked him, was I Muslim? You know, I, I, of course not. <laughs> I'm an Israelite. And I ain't tell him all that, but I just he said no. And he said, well, you, you know, you, you, uh, as far as the way you look, you know, I would think you're a Muslim. And I know why he's saying that is because I have a beard on my face. All right. I have, a, I have a beard on my face, you know. Now, according to our law, right, according to our law, our, our custom and traditions as Israelites, there's a there's a, we have a lot of things that are similar for as our traditions. OK. And the beard is one of them. I'll get that. Matter of fact, let's get a I believe it's Leviticus. Is it 21 and 5? It says, uh, They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So this is a tradition of, an Israel, of the Israelites, okay? We're not to shave off our beards. We're supposed to keep a beard on our face. We're not to make, uh, make our head bald. A ball, put a razor upon thy head, and we're not to put no cuttings in our flesh. That goes into tattoos. Okay, we are not to do these things. This is our custom and tradition as an Israelite. But now, when you even deal with in, in their faith, you know, you see them. A lot of them have the beards as well. Okay, the ones who is keeping their uh, uh, their customs, you know, as uh, in a uh, Islamic or Muslim religion, however you want to say it. All right. Now, going back into the point, okay, so he's saying all these, these, these he's uh, speaking to me about all these different things, and, um, you know, uh, I could tell from how long he has been here, and, and like we always say, you know, even to fellow Israelites, uh, we, we've been in America too goddamn long, well, now this applies to him as well, because, you know, as he, as he was speaking, he, uh, he started off and I, I'm trying to remember the best I could. He said, uh, you know, people think that, you know, because I'm a Muslim, you know, we're uh, the T word, you know, because the whole 911 situation that took place. He said, so people think that we're a T word, he said, but the media portrays that and that's not true. And I said, look, I know the media deception. I know you're not these T uh, uh, people that they that they try to portray to the world to be, you know. And he was like, "Okay, you know, you understand that." And you know, we just had a uh, 
just a, a regular conversation about uh, a lot of different things. But the point that I want to say is, he said he's he's about fifty. What did he say he was about fifty-two? No, no, no. He's he's a little older than that. Cause he said him and his wife been together for fifty-two years, and I believe he has been in America for, if I'm not mistaken, he said over twenty-three years. Or was he said he was in he's a, he was in Chicago for over twenty three years? Okay. Nevertheless, he been he been here in America for a very long time, right? And to the point where he forgot about his customs and traditions. Cause you know why he said he loved America, even though he said a lot of bad things is happening here. He said I'd have been all around the world. I'd have been in Saudi Arabia. I'd have been here. I'd been there. But he said nothing is like America. That's what he said. He says. Nothing is like America. Nowhere else would I rather be. He says, because here, here is the freedom and choice. And that's what I love about America. <laughs> In the back of my head, I said, <laughs> Babylon had been a golden cup. <laughs> because you see it. You see people that come from their countries and leave off from the customs of their forefathers. They leave off from their traditions and everything. And what do they do? What do they do? Okay, they uh, they learn the ways of America Battle on a great. Just like how, right, he, he showed me what was on his cart. He said, oh yeah, this, this meat I get, yeah, it's halal. It's halal. And if you don't know what halal means, let's pull it up real fast. Okay, hello. It says, uh, denoting or relating to meat prepared as prescribed by the Muslim law. Okay, so there's a certain way uh, how they uh, uh, sacrifice it. And I believe they pray over it as well, if I'm not mistaken. You know? Um, halal is a dietary law derived from the Islamic teachings, meaning lawful or permitted. You see? On the contrary, foods that are not considered halal are considered haram or not permitted. Because there are many culturally diverse places worldwide with more to develop over time. It's important to cater to a wide range. Okay, I'm not reading all that. So you understand what halal mean, right? But I just seen the next group of Muslims that has somewhat halal beef and halal chicken, right? According to their Islamic law or faith. But guess what they had on their, on their cart? Coconut shrimp. You see? coconut shrimp but according to the holy scriptures right we as we as israelites we are not permitted to eat uh, uh, uh bottom feeders and shrimp is one of them and let's get it in the scriptures right leviticus because it's not just wine everybody thinks it's just wine no it's more than just wine okay <clears throat> Leviticus chapter 11 verse and I just want to get to the point Verse 9 it says These shall you eat of all that are in the waters Which whoever have fins and scales In the waters And in the seas and in the rivers Them shall you eat And all that have not fins and scales In the seas and in the rivers Of all that move in the waters And of any living thing which is in the waters they shall be an abomination unto you. You see that? So it says, verse 11, they shall be even an abomination unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, but you shall have their carcasses an abomination. Whatsoever have no fins or scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. Okay? Now, this is according to our law, statutes, and commandments. This is according to our traditions as Israelites. We are not to eat shrimp. We are not to eat. We are not to eat crab. We are not to eat lobsters. Okay, we are not to eat no shellfish, catfish. None of those things are we permitted to eat. You know. But these people, on the other hand, you know, oh yeah, we 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 don't we can't eat we can't eat pork. You know, we can't do this. We can't do that. But we can eat shrimp. But no, no, the Lord said, oh, it's all garbage. That's all garbage. But see, that these are one of the differences between our, you know, uh, our uh, our traditions. Okay, and and, and and getting to the point, who who has the the true tradition, true, true, the true tradition? 
Well, the Israelites, we do. The Holy Scriptures, because we got the true, we got the true God. We got the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We got the everlasting power. You see? These these rest these heathen, you know, they worship idols. Okay? Now, you know, like I say, some of the things that they do is is, you know, respectable, you know, honorable in a sense of certain things that actually line up with the scriptures. And why do they line up with the scriptures? Because the scriptures was written first. The scriptures was written before the Quran. And basically, you know, it, it the what the Quran did was, you know, uh they, you know, basically try to they try to water down the scriptures in their book, you know? That's what, you know, I hope I'm saying the word the wording correctly. That's what they try to do. You know, make their own type of uh uh you know uh traditions and things of that sort you know that's what they did you know but the bible is the only book that stands why because the bible is the true book the holy book and the bible is the book of prophecy the book of the true living waters okay the the, the true of bread and the word of life that's it that's it okay and it just, it just, you know, it's one of those things where I had this conversation with this individual and it just, it just shows, right? It just shows the, 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 the power. Matter of fact, just, just like, uh, just like, uh, John the Revelator scene. Let's get that real fast. The book of John, I think it's chapter 17, verse. Mm, mm, mm. Let's start at the top. It says, and there, one, there came one of the seven angels, which had seven, had the seven vowels and talked with me. Saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, America also in the scriptures is represented as what? The great whore. The sitteth upon many waters, the waters represent the people. It says, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk by the wine of her fornication, which I mentioned earlier. This is why I was showing the, the uh, image of the golden cup. Okay? So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, and a woman, and the woman was arrayed in purple and in scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So as he mentioned, you know, when people look upon America from these other countries, what do they think? What do they say? Why do they think it's a great city? Why do they think it's just no other place to be but to be here in America, Bama, on a great? You see? But because things like what? The freedom of choice. You know? So, uh, uh, so when people think about America, it's just like, that's a place of glory. That's the place to be. We have to go by any means necessary. You know? With a lot of these people not knowing that there's a heavy, heavy destruction coming to America, Babylon the Great. You see, you think you're going to come over here for some type of peace and safety. But guess what? You got you coming over here to get judged because America's about to be get judged. You see. But it's this place is appealing. All right. To these people of the other nations. All right. And so when John is seeing this. This uh this this woman, okay, this whore, look how decked out she is. Right? It, she, it, she, she has become what? Appealing to the eye of the people. So verse 5 it says, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. You know? So it's appealing. You know, he brought his whole family, his daughters is here. He was telling me about how his daughters is, you know, they just bought a house and, you know, this and that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's lovely here. No other place to be on earth than come to America, Babylon, and great. You see? <laughs> but you see the, the destruction, okay, the, the pollution, you know, that it, that it has taught the people, you know? Now in this country in Pakistan ain't no freedom of choice. You know? Just to do whatever the hell you want to do. Look, look, look what freedom of choice has got people. Look at people, people are bugged out. 
people are bugged out behind this 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 freedom of choice. You see? So, I mean, that's pretty much just the, you know, the, the, the end of that topic that I wanted to touch on through the spirit of how America of Babylon has been that golden cup, you know. And guess what? As you see, you see the mindset of the people that are over here. And you see some of the mindset, some of these people that come over here be already, uh, you know, bugged out behind, you know, just being on the Internet. If you if you're in another country, being on the Internet, seeing how uh, America Babylon the Great is. You know, and they already have the mindset of this is how to be, you know, and leaving off from their true traditions and their way of life and, and, and way of integrity if they have some. You see? So, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the point on that. Lord, Lord willing, it's edifying. Um, and low, just to mention Revelation 17 chapter, you don't want to talk about the uh, seven heads and ten horns. Yeah, you know, you can equate that with the NATO, the EU. All right? So that's it through the spirit. Lord willing, with other fans, next time I want to say, shall I won't.